This is uh, Irvin Daphnis, Attorney Irvin Daphnis, with uh, episode 27. Um, it's amazing. Um, here live on location at the uh, Blacks, li Black Lives Matter Plaza, uh, right in front of the White House. <laughs> right here, that's right. So you know, I kind of had to come off in the corner, you know, as you can see. Well, what's really going on is there's, you know, a lot of police presence, you know, obviously Secret Service in front of, especially at this moment in time. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people just around, so I had to come off in the corner um, just to record this video. But today I'm going to show you, basically, um, you're going to see, uh, I'm going to show you live and direct uh, Black Lives Matters Plaza, what's going on, um, how amazing it is um, shout out to mayor uh, muriel bowser uh, for what she did and um, all the city council members of course um, here in chocolate city well now we call it uh <laughs> swirl <laughs> i call it swirl you know um listen guys you know um yesterday i uh, took part in a uh a uh, protest in richmond uh, virginia which is one of the, uh, you know, Virginia, you know what I'm saying? You are right, the good old boys territory, you know, uh, the capital of, you know, the Confederate, the Confederacy, if you will. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of statues there that, um, you know, and I have a lot of problems there with regards to, you know, a high number of evictions as a result of the coronavirus. And, um, you know, they are asking for a moratorium on um, evictions in, in Richmond. And most of those people, are obviously, who want to be, who they want to evict are um, uh, black, black and brown folks. You know how that goes. So, you know, actually, I came out to D.C. just to, you know, really just to unwind. Right. But, you know, I wasn't going to leave you out here. I'm still on 100 days of real motivation. Um, so I wanted to take this opportunity to motivate you and to let you know that uh, your continued persistence beats resistance. Persistence beats resistance. You know, guys, I've had some, um, you know, in life, as with all of us, we've, we've come across some real pitfalls in our lives. And one of uh, mine's as that I've always wanted to be a civil rights attorney. And in my pathway, guys, you know, um, some of you may not may know this and some of you may not know this, um, but along my journey, um, I was actually, you know, kicked out of law school um, uh, for failure to maintain a, a 2.0. That's University of Miami School of Law. And um, at that time in my life, I was, you know, going through a whole lot I was going through a whole lot in life at that time. And um, not to mention, there was some racial incidents on, on, on campus. Um, and now looking back, you know, it, I realized how, uh, how much of, of, of trauma that was during that period of time. Um, and um, be it as it may, um, I was put on ap academic probation and subsequently um, uh, you know, they make you wait a whole semester. Then that semester ended up being a year. Um, and uh, in the meantime, in between time, you know, I was really persistent. I had made up in my mind that come hell or high water, that nobody was going to allow me to stop um, doing what I wanted to do, what was always my dream. So, you know, I uh, got an internship, guys. I got an internship. Um, weird how that happened, because I just went to the courthouse. Went to the courthouse and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna find a job, I'm gonna do what I can. I don't know what I'm gonna do, with other, find a job so that I can show that my experience being out was all indicative of the future that I wanted to have. So I looked everywhere, you know, for a job and I was not able to find one. Lo and behold, um, I'm coming off the elevator, going off the elevator, one or the other. And um, I see 
the judicial, the JA, the judicial assistant for a judge that I interned for while I was in high school. So we're talking about um, 12, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7 years prior, I had worked for an administrative judge in Miami-Dade County as part of an externship in high school. And seven years later, here it is, I'm, you know, on academic probation, trying to get back into University of Miami School of Law, looking for a job. And I run across the judicial assistant of a judge that I work for, and, and they really, uh, you know, like me. And basically, I asked her, you know, hey, look, I'm looking for a job. She said, really? Call this number. Wrote it on a piece of paper. <laughs> I remember she wrote on a piece, hurriedly, because she was trying to do what she was doing, go to lunch or what have you. And I got it. And call the number, make a long story short, I got a paid internship with a judge during this period of time. I subsequently, from that internship, I then applied to work for the then Pitts, Hanfield, Valentine, and Vereen, the largest uh, black law firm in Miami with the likes of Judge Karen now and Judge Brinkley now, who were basically two of the hottest trial lawyers, uh, female African-American trial lawyers that you would ever see. I mean, they were the business. Um, of course, you have my, my, my friend and I, I'd say mentor and colleague, my homie, you know, he's not that old. <laughs> Rod Vereen. I was able to learn from and, and, and directly intern under Larry Hanfield, you know, the Larry Hanfield. So, you know, um, I was surrounded by uh, greatness uh, that allowed me to recognize that if I held on and focused on my business and doing what I had to do, that nobody could stop me. Well, I'm fast forwarding this uh, just slightly, um, but what ended up happening was I ended up not being a, 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 a admitted back into University of Miami. Basically, they de denied my readmission. And subsequently, at the time, I was working with the Florida House of Representatives. <laughs> I was working for the Democratic Party in Tallahassee, okay, um, on, on, on an internship. And subsequently, before this happened, because I went to study abroad during that summer, right before I got academic probation, or academically dismissed, right, I spent the summer abroad in London, England. <laughs> in fact, it was in London, England, while I'm abroad, at a summer program internship that I figure out and I find out that they're not going to readmit me, you know? So I made the best of my summer. You better believe it. <laughs> so domino effect, all that happened. And when I get back, I just basically had to work. In fact, I started substitute teaching. Yeah, that's right. I was a substitute teacher for a while in Dade County Public Schools because my options was like, you know what, if this law thing don't work out for me, I'm going to be a, a, an administrator in Dade County Public Schools, right? So be it as it may, guys, um, at the end of the day, I basically ended up reapplying to law school. I'm telling you, listen, if, if you have somebody out there that's going through trouble with law school or college and etc and they're they're going through a hard time i can i can coach them i can definitely coach them and 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 give them um some some advice if you want it you know um because i know how painful it is i i know how hurtful it is i i know how uh, the uncertainty the darkness and that's another thing you don't have anybody that you can really speak to about these things because, you know, you're embarrassed, right? 
more importantly, you don't know who to talk to, you know. You have no idea who you want to talk to about these things because it's like, you know, you know, I, I, who's been through this? Who can I trust? You know, you don't, you know, and so that's what the dilemma I was in. At the end of the day, I applied, reapplied to law schools, and then that's when I got accepted to Hofstra School of Law. Listen, I remember going to Hofstra and 